Hey guys, Tyler here. In a previous Alien Species video, fellow YouTuber Phobia and I examined the biology of the Metroid species from the franchise of the same name, a genetically engineered life form whose purpose was to exterminate the dangerous X parasite. The Metroids were designed by the bird like Chozo species. The Chozo have a rich culture, but the history of their species is largely shrouded in mystery and discernible primarily from ruins left on various colony worlds. In this video, Phobia and I will explore what we know about the Chozo, filling in the gaps in their history and speculating how such an intelligent avian life form could evolve in real life. The name Chozo is derived from the Japanese translation for Birdman Race, Chojin Zoku. They therefore possess a number of avian biological characteristics such as powered flight, high speed and agility, increased jump height, tough armor-like skin, and protective feathers. In addition to these corvid features, Chozo also share some characteristics with humanoid life, such as bipedalism, forward-facing eyes, and of course, intelligence. The Chozo are also roughly the same average height as humans, but have longer lifespans. All of these traits have contributed to their early history as a warrior race, and later, their ascension into an advanced interstellar civilization. As early as 1500 years before the events of the Metroid series, the Chozo developed spaceflight and became peaceful explorers, colonizing a number of planets throughout the universe. We don't really know any details about their original homeworld, but we can presumably learn a lot about their environmental preferences from the various worlds they settled on. Among the oldest of these colonies is Talon 4, the setting of Metroid Prime 1. Talon 4 orbits 5.2 astronomical units, or AUs, from its host star, FS-176, more than five times the distance between the Earth and the Sun, but retains a naturally oxygen-rich environment, sustainable for habitability. If the ecology of Talon 4 is anything to go by, then it could tell us some information about the Chozo's homeworld and their evolution. Talon 4 is said to be the most massive planet in its system, and thus may possess a thicker atmosphere and stronger gravitational pull. If the Chozo homeworld shared any of these attributes, then these could have contributed to the development of flight mechanisms and native life. The Chozo, being bird-like, may have followed a similar evolutionary path to familiar reptilian life forms, such as those we have on Earth. Their ancestors were likely predators, like raptors and other dinosauroids. The climate of their home planet would have encouraged the Chozo to evolve traits to give them an advantage over predators like bipedalism and forward-facing eyes. This latter trait, also known as binocular vision, is shared across the majority of species that are active predators. Binocular vision allows animals to perceive a three-dimensional image of their surroundings. The parallax resulting from the placement of the two eyes gives predators depth perception, which can help hunters see through their prey's camouflage. If these traits giving rise to an intelligent avian species seems unlikely, then consider the following. Various genera of birds, such as crows and ravens, have been observed engaging in not only tool use, but tool construction. In fact, members of the genus Corvus, particularly crows, are now considered among the most intelligent life forms on Earth. They have an encephalization quotient, a ratio of brain to body size that roughly correlates with intelligence, similar to non-human primates. Birds more developed central nervous systems may have even helped them survive the Cretaceous extinction 66 million years ago. In other words, in the absence of humans, corvids are among a select few genera of animals, including cephalopods, raccoons, and rats, that could potentially develop civilization given enough millions of years. Of course, the main limitations to such an evolutionary revolution include the fact that all of these animals are much smaller than we are, and thus they would be more prone to predation. But birds' ingenuity and their own predatory nature sets them above the rest. This means it's not hard to imagine an extraterrestrial civilization that is descended from such reptilian life forms. Speaking of tool use by a bird-like species, 
Ruins left by the Chozo on Talon 4 also give us important insights into their history. Their culture, as depicted in Chozo statues and writings in both the Prime series and in Metroid Zero Mission, is a dichotomy of both science and spiritualism. Though they did possess advanced building technologies like drills and automated robotics, most Chozo structures on Talon 4 are hand carved from stone, and this was a deliberate choice of theirs, we learn. Several logbook entries from Prime 1 reveal that the Talon 4 colony, what we know as Chozo Ruins, was intended to serve as a sacred site, with colonists electing to free themselves from all but the most essential technologies such as planetary defense and basic life support in pursuit of higher knowledge. The written language of Talon 4 consists of runic symbols, though as we find out, this is only one of multiple distinct Chozo languages. Another variant is found in ruins on the planet Zebes, which is the setting of the original NES Metroid, its remake Zero Mission, and of course, Super Metroid. Zebes is perhaps the most well-documented Chozo colony of all. It is another planet that orbits FS-176, has a relatively Earth-like composition, and is home to a vast network of caverns and labyrinths. Zebes has two moons, whose tidal effects presumably have great influence over the planet's weather systems. Structures left on Zebes by the Chozo, such as the Chozodia Temple near Crateria, as seen in Metroid Zero Mission, contain examples of the Zebesian script, the most common form of Chozo writing in the series, consisting of square-shaped letters that correspond to sounds in English, Zebes is also where the Chozo made some of the biggest social and technological advancements in their early spacefaring history, such as the Mother Brain AI, created to oversee the colony. Despite being an AI, it's also worth noting that Mother Brain is a hybrid organic being, an actual brain. The Chozo definitely seem not to care to form a distinction between organic and synthetic components in their creations with Samus's power suit serving as a prime example. More on that later. Mother Brain is not just some random, silly-sounding villain for the Metroid series to conveniently serve as a recurring final boss. She actually has a ton of lore, and by looking at her, we can learn quite a bit about the Chozo's government. She was originally peaceful, designed by the Chozo to serve as a sort of council, assessing dangers to colonists, and suggesting solutions to problems which would manually be approved by Chozo elders if they found it agreeable. She was never meant to be an autonomous AI, so think less of HAL from 2001 A Space Odyssey, and more like the three Magi from Neon Genesis Evangelion, who also serve as a parliament of sorts, and who also are manufactured from organic brains combined with synthetic components. Creepy. These are not the only examples of artificial intelligence being tasked with acting as a worldwide governmental body. The Kree and the Marvel Universe have a benevolent AI leader as well. Indeed, the real-life prospects of developing an artificial intelligence capable of managing the day-to-day -day needs of a civilization is not far-fetched. Advances in processing power in the coming decades will allow supercomputers to perform trillions of trillions of operations per second, millions of times faster than supercomputers of today. By 2047, such machines could simulate the computing power of over one million human brains, enabled by continued progress in the field of quantum computing and other areas, as well as the emergent field of optical computing, which uses photons instead of electrons. In addition to applications such as simulating proteins to develop new medicines, these machines will likely also be used to develop technologies to combat climate change and plan more efficient resource distribution. As I discussed in my video about the artificial intelligence in Star Trek, this doesn't necessarily mean that true human-like AIs are likely to emerge even in this century as a number of breakthroughs in other areas like neuropsychology will need to be made for that to be remotely possible. Rather, these supercomputers will be very good at carrying out narrowly defined programming instructions. And while mass adoption of cybernetics by the wider population is also something that has cultural and economic barriers associated with it, in niche applications, even humans could regularly interface with technology to perform tasks beyond our current capabilities. 
All of this is to say that the fact that Mother Brain is capable of performing as many tasks as she does is entirely thanks to the synthesis of her organic and synthetic components, a phenomenon that, while still probably far from mass adoption, has a basis in reality. Many people who are paralyzed, for example, have had their bodies augmented, so to speak, with computer interfaces that allow them to communicate verbally with text-to-speech software. This is merely the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what humans are theoretically capable of, so Chozo creations such as Mother Brain are simply an example of this and other technologies, like cloning, taken to the extreme. From here, the Chozo set their sights on expanding to other worlds and other solar systems, including the planet SR388. When building colonies, the Chozo have always taken special care not to harm the local environment, except when they consider something especially ecologically dangerous. The most obvious example, of course, being the Xparasites. As we discussed in the Metroids video, the Xparasites presented a unique threat to both Chozo and life beyond the planet. So, using their scientific prowess, the Chozo, with the help of Mother Brain, engineered the Metroids to control the X's numbers. Some depictions of Metroids show them as pets to the Chozo, implying that their creators never expected the Metroids to inherit the capacity for violence that they did. But unfortunately, as we know, the Metroids designed to prey on the X eventually began attacking the Chozo as well, driving them off-world and dooming SR388 to become a planet-sized Metroid hive. In the wake of the SR388 incident, Chozo society began to undergo a number of changes. For one thing, the Chozo's long lifespans contributed to declining birth rates and a slowed pace of technological advancement. Seeing two of their creations turn on them also gave the Chozo impetus to reconsider the overall role of technology in their lives. Both of these factors led the Chozo to withdraw from interstellar affairs, becoming more of an observer race. A logbook entry from Metroid Prime even indicates that at least some Chozo had begun to ascend to some sort of higher dimension, further demonstrating the mystical nature of their existence. Chozo prophecies warned of the Leviathan, a cosmic entity that spreads the radioactive substance, Phazon, throughout the universe. The Chozo referred to a great poison implied to be the result of Phazon exposure, killing Town 4's native flora and fauna. This great poison led the Chozo to consider abandoning their native dimension altogether. This indicates that the Talon IV Chozo were able to move at will across both time and space, much like the prophets from Star Trek Deep Space Nine. Their last hope, the log entries indicated, was in Samus, whom they referred to as the Hatchling. After witnessing space pirates attack Earth Colony K2L, the Chozo took in a young Samus Aran, whose parents were killed in the attack, and raised her on Zebes. They infused Samus with their blood and trained her to be a warrior, developing the power suit for her protection. The Chozo incorporated several elements of their biology into the suit. The tough exterior, high speed and agility, increased jump height, limited flight capabilities, and ability to traverse through environments toxic to humans. The suit's visor even has a beak shape, modeled after the Chozo's own faces. This gave Samus, and later the Human Galactic Federation, access to Chozo technology to fight various threats. While all this occurred, Mother Brain was growing more self-aware and autonomous. Upon reaching adulthood, Samus left her Chozo family to join the Galactic Federation, becoming a bounty hunter under their employ. When the space pirates attacked the Chozo colony on Zebes, Mother Brain betrayed her creators, allying herself with the invading army instead. Mother Brain subsequently made it her prime directive to bring order to the galaxy by any means necessary, becoming the space pirate leader of the Zabesian colony and reinstating the Metroid breeding program. As for the Chozo who inhabited several of the former colonies we visit in the games, we don't really know what happened to them. Presumably the Chozo have colonized hundreds of other planets throughout the universe, including the planet ZDR as featured in Metroid Dread. We will likely learn even more about the Chozo in Dread, so it will be interesting to see how Nintendo expands our base of knowledge about what is without a doubt the most influential alien species in Metroid. The Chozo are quite interesting from both an evolutionary and archaeological perspective. 
The ruins they left behind tell us a lot about their journey from being a warrior race in the ancient past to becoming a peaceful, exploratory interstellar civilization. But the legacy they leave behind with the Metroids and Mother Brain means that they have inadvertently unleashed some of the greatest threats to the galaxy. But none of these threats is as deadly as the X-Parasite, which we should see more of in Metroid Dread, along with the Chosa themselves. Thank you all so much for watching. You'd shout out to Phobia for helping out with the script and narration for this video. Be sure to check out his channel. He covers glitches you can perform in various video games, including Super Metroid. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below and don't forget to share it. That stuff really helps me out. I'm really interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do that as well so you won't miss future uploads. And click the bell icon to receive all notifications. If you want to support the channel even further, becoming a patron or a member is a great way to do so. Links to those, as well as my social media and merch store, are in the description below. That's all I have for this week. I'll see you next time.